The agent war is still going on. With every new feature release, Claude Code tries to push Cursor out of the market. But Cursor is now using OpenAI's new model GPT-5 as a competitive advantage, and building on that, they've just released something, their new Cursor agent. Now, should you switch? That's exactly what I'm going to tell you in this video. So you can see that they've gone ahead and put their agent right in the terminal. I have tested it out. I'll even walk you through what's available and what's actually missing. But even with this new agent, they need to catch up with all the amazing Claude Code features. These include hooks, sub-agents, and the crazy function calling that Claude Code is able to do. The key advantage that this new Cursor CLI has is that it can actually switch models. Now, with the new GPT-5 just released, people are saying it's one of the best models out there. It even surpasses Claude models and certainly does have a larger context window. I've seen examples of it generating UI and implementing physics. I must say, I am impressed. But still, all these small tests and benchmarks happen with every Every release. Each model promises to be better than the last. Over the coming weeks as I use and test it out, I'll let you know in my videos how GPT-5 actually performs. If you scroll down, you'll see that they've given the command to install the cursor CLI. You just copy it, head back to your terminal, paste the command, and it's going to install. It pulls the install script and runs it. After it's installed, you'll have to add it to your path. Then you can start it using the cursor agent command. After I did that, it had to log me into my cursor account. It opened up the browser and and after I logged in, it showed me this screen telling me to return to the CLI. This is the cursor agent. Again, before starting out, they clearly say that it is still in beta. There are a lot of security risks, and we should use this at our own risk. Before I take you through the testing I did with this using the GPT-5 model, let me show you what's included in this new command line coding tool. We have our very first limitation. Cursor rules and ignore files, such as ignoring .env files, are not implemented. So again, a really bare bones agent. It still hasn't implemented those functionalities. If I open my current working repo in Cursor, you'll see that I do have these test files I made. If I try to reference them, nothing appears. This means I can't even reference files right now. If I try to drag and drop an image, that's also not possible. Now let's have a look at the slash commands that are currently pre-built into this Cursor agent. First, we have the model command. This lets you select different models. Again, the only competitive advantage it has over Claude code right now. Claude code can use other providers via Claude Code Router, which is an excellent tool. But the problem is you have to use that on API pricing. Cursor still gives you this wide variety of models, even on the $20 plan. You do have some limits, but it's still much cheaper than API usage. Then you have the option for auto run mode. They've implemented two commands, which I think have the same function. They just start a new chat session, new chat and clear. Both of them simply start a new session. Later on, we have Vim mode, something Claude Code already has. There are also some other basic standard commands. Functionality wise, it's still really lacking. Now let me show you how I tested the cursor agent with the new GPT-5. I asked it to make a Kanban task manager app in simple HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. I told it to use the liquid glass design from Apple because I wanted to test the UI capabilities of the GPT-5 model. I also told it that the animations should be really good. What happened was it just got stuck. I waited eight minutes, nothing happened. So I had to cancel that instance and create another one. I gave it the same prompt again, and this time it worked. It went ahead and created all three files. I still don't know why it didn't work the first time. Here's what it ended up creating. I could add sample tasks to the Kanban board, and in terms of UI, it looked really good. But there was a problem. The Kanban board body was overlapping with its header. Another issue was that when I dragged one task over to another, it occupied the whole body. The card lost its shape. The shape was only restored when I added another card from the previous board. To fix this, I went back to Cursor and told it about the problems. Since I couldn't give it an image, I just put the image inside the directory. I told it there was an image logged in there. From what I saw in the tools, I don't think it read the image. It only read the two files that were already there. Still, it did change some code. Now, if I add tasks and drag one card to another board, the issue with the card losing its shape is fixed, but the overlapping issue remains. So again, just a bare bones agent, nothing really special. To fully catch up, Cursor needs to put a lot of work into this agent. Even their visual IDE hasn't caught up with Claude code yet. In my opinion, with this move, Cursor is actually losing one of its biggest advantages over Claude code. 
Claude code uses a terminal structure, but many people still use Claude code inside cursor because the visual element makes it feel better. I don't understand why they're making this move because a lot of people prefer that combination. Overall, it's a weird move from cursor, but I did like the UI that the GPT-5 model implemented. I'll be testing it with other tools as well to pinpoint whether this error was due to the cursor agent or the limitations of the model. So should you switch to the new cursor agent? In its current state, I'd say no. It's still too limited and doesn't offer enough advantages to justify leaving Claude code. But keep an eye on it as they continue to develop it. That brings us to the end of this video. If you'd like to support the channel and help us keep making videos like this, you can do so by using the super thanks button below. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.